Good morning, Calvary Kids. Pastor Harris here with Children's Church Online. Guys, I hope you are getting to enjoy your snow day. It's not quite snowing yet, but it should be getting here. It looks like it's going to get here around 10, 30, 11 o'clock today. Hope you guys, I hope we get plenty of snow. I hope you guys get to go out, have some fun, build a snowman, have a snowball fight. Maybe if we get enough, maybe go sledding, whatever. I hope you guys get to have a ton of fun with your snow day. I know it kind of stinks that you guys are already out of school on Monday, but again, just go out and enjoy your snow day. Like I said, I'm praying, I'm hoping you guys get plenty of snow that you'll get to go out, have some fun with it. But before we get to that, because you got like another hour or so before the snow actually gets here, I wanted to come to you guys with a quick lesson today, a quick little children's church lesson today. Now this month, we've been talking about self-control. And remember, self-control is choosing what you know is right, even when you don't want to. So remember we talked about last week how it's something you want you want to do something you know it's not right and so you choose to do or you choose not to do that thing that you want to do because that's self control you have self control you want to do something you know it's not right and so you choose not to do that thing that you want to do that's self control and today we're going to be talking about controlling our words or choosing our words very carefully because our words have power all right think about it like this how many of you guys have ever done a mad lib before yeah mad libs are a ton of fun if you've never done them before it's where you basically you have a story with a bunch of blanks in the story and you pick random words not knowing anything about the story you pick a bunch of random words and just insert them into the story and then you read the story and usually it comes out really crazy, doesn't make a lot of sense. Usually it's really funny if you pick the right words and they kind of fit in the right place. But the story never makes any sense. Why? Because you're choosing a bunch of random words and words have meaning, words have power. And in a story that you know nothing about, when you just choose a bunch of random words, it's always going to sound weird, it's always going to sound crazy, it's going to sound funny at times. But our words have power, and that's what we're going to be talking about today, choosing our words wisely, controlling our words. So we're going to look at a couple of Bible verses this morning. First Bible verse we're going to look at this morning is found in Proverbs. If you guys remember, who wrote the book of Proverbs? Anybody remember? That's right. King Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs. King Solomon was David's son. Remember, David was... Uh, the second king of Israel, defeated Goliath. He was a, what the Bible called a man after God's own heart. And because of David's love for God and God's love for David, when Solomon became king, God came to Solomon and told Solomon, you can wish for anything you want. You can wish for anything you want and I will give it to you because I loved your father David that much. You can wish for anything you want and I'll give it to you. And Solomon, he didn't choose money. He didn't choose power. He didn't choose to be like famous or anything. He chose wisdom. He said, God, give me wisdom so that I can be a good king and I can rule over my people and make wise choices and make wise decisions. Give me wisdom. So God gave Solomon that wisdom and Solomon became one of the wisest men to have ever existed on the face of the earth. And he wrote this book full of wise sayings called Proverbs. And so we're going to look at a verse in that today. If you've got your Bibles and you want to look with me, we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 12, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. All right. And this is what Solomon says about controlling your words. He says, the one who speaks rashly is like a piercing sword, but the one who speaks wisdom brings healing. All right, so what does he mean by that? You can really hurt somebody by saying something mean, something hurtful to them. You can really hurt them and do a lot of damage. But what does Solomon say? He says, the one who speaks with wisdom or the one who speaks wisely brings healing. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Instead of speaking words that hurt people and, and, and that, can, that can really do damage to them, Jesus wants us to speak words of wisdom, speak wisely, think about what we're saying. And instead of speaking words that hurt or that are mean, speak words that bring healing. Speak words that are nice. 
speak words that um, encourage other people because those words can bring healing. Another example the Bible gives us is found in the New Testament in James chapter 3. James chapter 3, James writes this about the tongue. All right. All right. He says in James chapter 3, verse 5, he says, So too the tongues mean our words, the things that we say because we need our tongue in order to speak. All right. So, so too the, the tongue is a small part of the body. It boasts great things, meaning it can do a lot of it can do a lot of great things. Consider how a large fire, a small fire ignites. Or I'm sorry, sorry. Consider how a large forest, a small fire ignites. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, is placed among the parts of our body. It pollutes the whole body, sets the course of life on fire, and is set on fire by hell. So what he's saying by that is he thinks think about a forest. All right, you've got this huge forest out there, all these giant trees and everything. All it takes is just a small little fire to start. And that small fire can grow and burn down the entire forest. All right. What James is saying here is when it comes to our words, it only takes one small word, one mean thing said to do a whole lot of damage. All right. Some of you guys have realized this. Maybe you've said like one mean thing to your sister or brother, and then your parents hear that, and you can get in a whole lot of trouble just for saying one mean thing. And James is saying here, if we're not careful with our words, it can set a fire. It can do a lot of damage to other people if we're not careful. Even if it's just one little thing, one mean comment to somebody, one hurtful thing that we say to somebody, it can do a lot of damage. The same way just a little fire can do a lot of damage to a forest. All right, so here's what I want to encourage you guys today. We're talking about controlling our words, having self-control. Oh, so when you guys going throughout the week, I want to encourage you guys, be thinking of ways to speak kindly to other people, to encourage other people. And when you're tempted to say something mean or when you're getting mad at somebody and those those words, mean things you say, start creeping into your mind, and I want you to exercise self-control, which is what we're talking about. And when you have those things where you want to say something mean, when you want to say something hurtful to somebody, but you know you shouldn't, choose not to. Choose not to be that fire or that sword in somebody's life, but instead choose to speak wisely and to bring healing to other people. Choose to speak nicely, to bring encouragement. So I want to challenge you guys with that this week. Be thinking about ways that you can speak nice and encouraging things to other people and try to control when you get angry, when you get upset. I know it's hard, but when you get angry, when you get upset and you're thinking, you know, I want to say this mean thing to my brother, my sister, to somebody at school, whoever it is, choose not to do that. Instead, choose to say something nice to them, something encouraging to them. Or sometimes the best thing is just not to say anything at all. Sometimes if you're angry, the best thing to do is just walk away. All right. So, but I want to encourage you guys, guys think about your words because your words have power. Speaking nice and encouraging things to other people rather than mean and hurtful things to other people. All right. Again, I hope you guys have a great snow day. One quick message for our parents. Obviously, we're unable to have our parent meeting today um, at church because of the snow. But we are going to try to have it next Sunday. Hopefully the snow will be all gone by then. Next Sunday we'll meet. We'll have a quick just 30-minute meeting with our parents after the service next Sunday. Uh, that, so, it'll, again, it'll be real quick. Just want to go over a couple things about the new Wednesday night curriculum, uh, which we're going to be doing. I want to go over a couple things about summer camp. So if you've got kids second through fifth grade that are interested in going to summer camp this year, I want to encourage you to be at that meeting because I've got a couple questions I need to get you guys' opinion on uh, and a couple things that we want to talk about for camp. So I want to encourage you guys 
please, if you can, be there next Sunday after church. We'll have a quick meeting about Wednesday night, about camp. And also, it'll be your opportunity to pick up the devotional guide we've been talking about. Talked about it last Sunday and on the monthly video. But this is the whole story for the whole family. It's a devotional guide that we're giving to you guys as a gift this year. And I want to encourage you guys, pick it up. Uh, next Sunday, and they'll also be available at the kids' check-in desk moving forward. But if you don't have a family devotional book that you're doing for this year, I want to encourage you pick up this family devotional book because it'll be a lot of fun. Especially if you guys don't have, if you've never done a family devotional book before, this is a great one to get started on for the first time. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Again, enjoy your snow day. Be safe out there. Uh, but go out and have some fun. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday.